And you you clearly have a, an interesting view on what fighting is for you, and 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 bringing back memories like that from the time in your life when you're still you're still young, right? I mean, but then you turn 20, and and you're going to Japan now. And at this time, this is in 1991. And uh, personally, I had just started as a uchideshi at the Hombu Dojo uh, in in March. So in November is the World Tournament. So I'd been there for six, eight months. And uh, I remember seeing all the different teams from all over the world coming in. And, and the Brazilian team was, there was a lot of buzz about this young kid. For me, he's like two years older than me, so it's not a young kid. But everyone was talking about this new Brazilian kid. He's coming up and they talk about Filio, Filio. And I, I was like, yeah, Filio, I don't know about Filio. No. Because listen, Andy Hoog was fighting in this tournament. Andy Hoog, he was my idol. I used to have a poster. <laughs> I used to have a poster of Andy Hoog on the ceiling on, on top of my bed so I would dream about him when I was going to sleep every night. Anyway, you're at the world tournament. Like, tell us like the, some experiences and feelings that you had and then also clearly run us through the experience of actually having to fight Andy Hoog because this, this completely changed your life. Exactly. So Andy Hoog is my guiding star. Um, uh, since when I was 15 years old, I think, I used to see the World Tournament, and the fourth World Tournament was the best World Tournament for me ever. So Andy fought against Kancho Matsui in the, in the final, and I was like so impressed. And also I saw Masuda fighting very, very strong, very strong Geda Mawashigiri, Kurosawa also, and I was so impressed about those guys, and I remember as I told you, we have to dream, we have to be happy in life. And then I used to go to dojo and I play with my, my friends, say, okay, let's fight. No, so now I fight like I'm anti hog And then I start fight like anti hog Okay, now I fight like Kancho Matsui. And then I'll shiromashi, get it, this and that. So now I fight like Masuda and then just get them all. So dreaming that want to be like them. Yeah. So life is a dream. So dream, dream that your dream might come true, so you have to dream. And then I dreamed like fighting them. Uh, but actually I was being them, not fight them, but I was being them. And then suddenly they say, okay, so now you are going to the world tournament. I was like, wow, I'm going to Japan, wow. The guy who come from this small city, it's like 10,000 people lives in that city. It's a very small city. And suddenly I'm going to Japan, I was like, wow. And then, we knew that uh, Angie Hug beat our our coach Ademir Costa, and then was like a revenge. <laughs> and then they prepare me. So this is also a very good thing. Thing is, if you prepare for something, you have chance to have success. But if you don't prepare, of course, it's going to be impossible. Not impossible, but very very difficult to have success. Even though when you prepare you have difficulties to get what you, what you want. But if you, so if you don't prepare, it's even worse. So we prepared to fight, to fight Andy Hoog. And, but I didn't know if I was going to fight him. But on my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to fight Andy Hoog. And every day in training, uh, as I said to you guys uh, at the class, every class we do Kihon. Every class, the first, uh, first 30 minutes, it's Kihon. It takes actually 35 minutes to complete Kihon. And when we do Maigiri, we kick 100 times, Mawashigiri, 100 times. And then when I was kicking Mawashigiri, I, always, I, I was always thinking about kicking Andy's head. I was like, imagine it, I'm going to kick his head, I'm going to kick his head. And then come back home after finish the day, sit down and close your eyes. Nobody taught me about meditation, things like that. But I was meditating without no. I was like, okay. And then I closed my eyes and start thinking, okay, what I have done, what have I done today? And and this actually uh, gets um, uh, compared when my brother died, makes me think about only thinking. So actually it was not really, really a bad thing when my brother died because we all are going to die. That's okay. So we just uh, need to be more relaxed and understand that things here come and goes 
just like like this so relax enjoy life be happy with what you're doing and then i learned that actually uh, in that time i didn't learn but now i can when i sit back uh, okay that's okay that's that's life and also that's life andy hug taught me that too uh, when he was fighting k1 Sometimes he lose, and then for him it's like, okay, that's life. He used to say, that's life, and then I'm like, oh, that's good, because there is nothing you can do. So if you have a trouble, if you don't fix the trouble, the trouble is not fixed, that's the fix. When it's not fixed, so done, finish. So for me it was like that. And so I was preparing to fight Andy. Think about fighting him. Preparing, preparing. Go back, sit down, and start thinking. And now I think that I was going to the stage. I was going to the tatami to fight him. And my heart started... I started getting nervous. You see? So just thinking, your, your heart started beating fast. And then that is a kind of experience already. So, and I've been doing that so many times. When I was there to fight Andy, when I saw him, and then suddenly something, something cut, and uh, I came back to my dreams. And then I didn't know that I kicked him. The kick just come. And this is a very important thing, because you prepare yourself. So everybody prepare. Everybody wants to have something. You, you want to have something, but you prepare good. But in the day of the fight, you don't let things go. Your mind, your small mind, um, how do you say, um, bothers you, uh, get, make it complicated for you. Your small mind, the mind that everybody has here in the world, the big mind, it's inside of us, we all have this, can do anything if you relax. So you prepare. You prepare, and then the big mind know if you prepare, and then you relax, and things happen, and actually happen, things good, you have a success. But if your small mind start thinking, oh, 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 many, many people here, the first time you're in Japan, oh, they, they rob you, the Japanese, they, they, they always stop the fight. So the small mind will say a lot of shit to you. If you pay attention, and then you're not relaxed, the big mind is not happening, and then your body that you prepare is a waste. You prepare for nothing. Right. So I was relaxed, and then I kicked him without know that I kick. And same thing happened when I fought Ernest Hush, my big brother as well, my big, 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 big friend. I, uh, it was the same with him. Suddenly, I, I, I remember when we, we went down, I didn't know what happened. It was like I was hypnotized. And then people say, oh, you knock him out. I say, yeah, how? Because I prepare, I prepare, and then I release. But then when I fought Mike Bernardo, yeah. I was on the ring, and then I saw Mike Bernardo coming, and then I was like, Mike Bernardo is coming. And, the, and then the small mind started bothering me. And then I got to that, and I was like, oh, I'm in the ring, fight Mike Bernardo. And then suddenly, boom, a jab. And then I was like, oh, he, he, he jabbed me. And he did this, and he did that. And then he started doing a lot of things, and then I lost KO, because I lost my concentration. So that's the point. <laughs>